Hey guys, this is Sharif from Culture Toronto and I wanted to do a video review of uh, this katana that I got from Swords of the Northshire. Um, and to make it more interesting, I wanted to compare this katana to uh, some cheaper swords that I'm pretty embarrassed that I bought back in the day. Um, but you know, it is what it is. This one is was from Chinatown about like under a hundred dollars and um, it's actually stainless steel which is horrible for swords and this one is uh, this black uh, dragon katana from Xinhua and it, it's handcrafted in China with them and it claims to be Damascus steel but we're gonna go into um, some of the differences of what that actually means and what you can expect so I mean, first off, when you look at these swords, um, and you, you know, just the first thing that you're gonna notice is that um, the tension between the saya and the handle, that it's just proper, like, you know, like you, you, you have no words. You could even swing the sword um, with, the, with the saya on and you'll have no worries of it coming off. Um, with these other swords, you know, quite frankly, like, it, it's just pretty flimsy and it, like, I'm worried that if I swung this, this would go flying into the camera straight up. Um, and this one, uh, it has, like, no tension at all, which is surprising because this one is, like, like, slightly more expensive at around uh, $200 USD. Um, but, yeah, so... You know, good on swords, swords of the Northshire because you have that tension for when uh, you unsheath it and then it comes out really like quickly after that tension. Um, so that tension is created by the habaki, which is this sort of brass fitting right here. Um, and, and what it does is it creates that sort of like interlocking tension that you want in your katana. So for me, like I uh, bought this katana outright, like I didn't, this isn't sponsored at all. Um, and the, the pattern that I was going for was for like a koi fish pattern. Um, so I have the Suba, which is actually like a, it has a koi fish on it, the Manuki um, for the right and left hands here and here are um, also a koi fish and I have an engraving at the top of the, of the side that's a koi engraving, a koi engraving as well. The next thing I would say, like after you, you know, you hold the sword and you feel that proper tension between the saya and the, and the handle itself is just how nice the ito or suka ito is, which is this, um, this cord here, I think it's cotton but it's like a high quality cotton. And um, you can just tell that it's been wrapped super, super, super tight. Um, and it just feels really good. And the Manuki um, go right in the palms of your hands on the, on the right and left side. So it feels like they're really well placed and um, you know, it feels solid and, and great. Um, and then, you know, like comparing it to this sword, like with the wooden handle, um, you know, it's a little more slippery. I, but the, like this style of sword is expected to be like this, but it's a bit more slippery and, uh, you know, a little bit more like, like less grippy. So if you were really to go, to go at it, um, you know, there's a danger that the sword might fly out of your hand. And then at the slightly more expensive sword, 
um, you can see that the the Ito is less um, is less tight. Like you can actually move these little nodules around in between here um, quite a bit, um, and it's actually started to fray quite a bit. And like I haven't used a sword like much at all for doing anything. Um, so, you know, that's another factor to consider when you get these cheaper swords, like how tightly that, that Ito is wrapped. Um, the Minuki on this are much smaller and they look, they look like cheap, I don't even know. It's like a goldish metal, I don't know what metal it is, um, but it looks cheaper. And uh, of course the uh, Samegawa or the, the eel is completely fake on this one like you can scratch it like if you can move it around and you know that's one striking thing on the real uh sword here that you know you can actually see the um the little nodules of the ray skin inside here which is really it's beautiful and it, it looks really nice and it actually adds to the grip of the sword itself. So um, it's really quite awesome and I'm really, really pleased with it. The other thing uh, we should look at is the actual blade itself, obviously. Um, so for this sword, I got it made, uh, it, so it's clay tempered. So you have a real ham on here. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, there's a real hem on on this blade and if you look closely you can actually see uh, ripples which indicate that it, it's a it's a hand folded metal well it could be machine folded but this in this case um, it was hand folded so it's really really uh, pretty to see the, the ripples with the hem on itself um, is really nice and just you know it's what you want in a katana for sure um, the other thing is that it's sharp but it's not like razor sharp um, although I wouldn't run my fingers this way because it might cut me but like it could be a little sharper to be honest but um, the the edge comes from the back like to the edge and it's slightly rounded and because uh, I requested that Niku rounding which means it's like it means apple seed but it means that the blade is actually comes out rounded to the edge um, as opposed to like being straight to the edge um, and you know it's just something to consider if you're doing heavy cutting, you definitely want to get the Niku option. Um, <clears throat> you know, looking at the cheaper sword here, I mean, first of all, this is stainless steel, which everyone says past 12 inches is dangerous to use. Uh, this sword is also not full tang, which means the blade comes and stops about here, whereas on the swords of the Northshire sword and the more and like slightly more expensive economy sword um, you at least have the blade going to the edge of the handle which is definitely what you want on this one they attempted to add a uh, fake ham on I don't know if you can see that but um, they have like a like a fake really uh, standard and repeating triangle pattern that's going up and down the sword um, and the other thing to note is that the blade itself is like sharpened in a way that's not coming from the edge of the blade like the blade goes out and then it, it makes a, a quick sharp bite um, which shows that this wasn't really sharpened in the way that you would want it to be sharpened like right from the edge to the to the tip of the um, to the tip of the blade. This sword here, it also has the ripples, um, but it's 
like red and black so they use like different acids or something like that to um, to create this contrasting ripple but the thing to note here is that the even though this is quote unquote Damascus steel which just really means folded on uh, today's day um, the the alloys are mystery so like everywhere on the and I searched the website because before doing this video because I wanted to like make sure that you know I'm not misspeaking here but um, the alloys there's no mention of what kind of alloy it is uh, which you know just means that it's likely che like cheaper metals uh, cheaper steels and probably not even like 1060 um, the sword of the Northshire sword this is actually 1095 steel, which means that 0.95% of it is carbon. Um, that just means that this is a hard, really durable blade. Um, and if you're gonna do any cutting, you, could, you should be able to uh, expect that the edge will maintain itself and um, the sword should hold up. So, you know, overall, um, if you're gonna do any shopping for swords, like I got this little guy in Chinatown when I was in my teens, um, you know, you, you definitely wanna stay away from stainless steel. That's 100% what you wanna do. Um, for, the, for this like more expensive sword, I would have looked out for what kind of metal is actually being used here um, because you know it really makes a difference especially if you're going to try cutting things um, the the alloy really really makes a difference so this sword I, I wouldn't really try cutting anything with it's also like completely straight where you would want like some curvature in your katana just to make sure that um, it actually cuts and slices properly um, and yeah like like one of the most beautiful features of this sword um, in addition to the ripples is the hamon which is this like uh, ripply line along the edge of the sword which shows that clay was used to temper it and what that means is that the, the edge of the sword actually uh, cools at a different rate from the back of the sword. And what this does is it makes uh, the back more springy and the front harder and like slightly more brittle, but like harder and sharper. Um, like it'll make a better edge essentially. So, you know, really happy with that. Uh, the other thing, or another thing to look out for is like how tight the sword feels. Like you can hear no rattling. Um, all these pieces are really tight, can't be moved. The habaki doesn't move and the washers here are centered, which is, you know, nice and they don't move either. The fuchi is, you know, tight doesn't move at all. The kashara is also tight, it doesn't move at all. Um, and the, the ito is really tight as well. So all of that makes for like a tight feeling katana. So if you're gonna swing it, um, you can expect that it can, it'll can it stay together and won't create further damage or further rattling inside it. That's like a huge difference between this and like the, the other economy blade. Um, you know, this, I don't know if you can hear that, but it rattles if you shake it. Uh, this habaki rattles, the washer moves, it's not centered at all. Um, the fuchi moves over here, and the kashara is actually tight on this, but if you pull a little bit, um, you'll probably loosen it up as well so now overall like 
Swords in the Northshire had really great customer service. You'll uh, deal with a guy named Bryce probably if you order a katana from them. Um, it's the cool thing is that you can customize all these pieces like for the fu Fuchi and Kashara I chose a flowery pattern. For the Suba I chose like a koi fish. And for the Minuki, I also chose koi fish. Um, it's a really pretty blade. So, you know, I would even do some cutting with this just to like, you know, see how well it holds up. Um, but I can say that I'm really happy to have like a real katana considering what I've bought in the past. Um, a thing to note is that while the folding is really pretty it doesn't really add any like strength to the blade itself but I think it looks um, just really nice to look at and it, it makes it more of a unique art piece on, in your collection if you get the folded definitely get the real ham on if you're gonna order from Swords of the Northshire I almost got um, the fake one so thank you Ralph for you know, recommending that I should get the real clay tempered ham on. Um, it makes all the difference, for sure. Like, like if this was fake, it would have just felt, it would have felt like this one, uh, where it just, you know, it's just etched on and it doesn't mean anything in regards to the difference in the metals. So yeah, that's my, that's my review. Um, I'm happy with it. Like, I had one qualm, uh, the the kasaki or the tip of the sword um, is a little blunted, right? Like it's not the sharpest that I've ever seen, um, which was surprising for me. But other than that, I think it's a beautiful sword. It's sharp enough to cut stuff and it's authentic, it has real ray skin real ham on folding all the parts are fitted the ito is tight just feels amazing to swing um so yeah if you're in the market for a sword and you really want a katana and you want it to be authentic uh give swords of the north shire a look they're at least worth a look for sure um, this carving of the koi that I got on the edge of the saya uh, was extra. So they actually hired a graphics designer and, um, and then they took an image that I gave them and made it more of like a, an image that they could etch into this and then they, and then someone carved it in. So, you know, you can, if you ask, you know, you can get different um, customizations like all across the board so yeah just the main thing don't get stainless steel um, don't waste your time if you're gonna get a, a slightly more expensive sword look out for the real ray skin this is fake it feels horrible and and it, it damages and and cuts and stuff um, look out for the alloys like even though it says Damascus steel what kind of steel is that really is it 1060 is it 1095 um, you want probably either 1060 or 1095 and yeah I'm just looking forward to growing my collection and um, this is a different video from what I normally do um, but if you liked it let me know in the comments um, if you bought uh, any crappy swords, I'd love to hear about it. If you recently bought any um, authentic katanas, I'd love to hear about it. And um, that's about it. I just, I'm just going to leave it there. And uh, yeah, it's catchy next time. So thanks so much for watching. And have an amazing day.